Hi Booktube, Lynette here and in today's video I'm going to tell you the books that I finished in the month of February. If you've seen my February TBR you know that the Wheel of TBR was not kind to me and alongside the book club pick for the month I ended up with three historical fiction novels uh, on the TBR, one of which was a thousand page historical fiction novel. So yes, I was feeling very apprehensive going into February. February's a short month as well because it's 28 days. So, you know, you lose two days reading as it is, um, two, three days reading as it is. And yes, so I, I wasn't looking forward to this month at all um, because I knew there was only one book that I was potentially going to finish for the month. So how did I do? Let's get on and tell you about the books that I finished. The first finish for the month was Reunion in Death by J.D. Robb. Again, as I've said in all my previous videos for the last 12 months, um, I was really looking forward to reading this one and it was no exception to the rule. I did really enjoy it and I'm really happy that I have picked it up and that I actually started the month with it as well because I think if I'd started with any of the other books, it would not have gone quite as well. Um, but Reunion in Death, again, is about Eve Dallas, who is a homicide detective with the New York uh, Police and Security Division. And she's married to her husband, Rourke, just known as Rourke. And in this book, um, a murderer that she helped to put away previously has been released from prison for good behaviour. Only this murderer goes on to murder more people and it falls to Eve to put her back behind bars. She's actually challenging Eve and her ultimate goal is to murder Rourke and murder Rourke in front of Eve to show Eve that she is a better than her. Um, and it's all the build up to that. I really enjoyed this one because this one actually made Eve really have to think hard. Um, this this uh, murderer, she actually really did challenge Eve a lot. Um, and I really enjoyed that. It wasn't quite so easy for Eve to step inside her head like it has been in the previous novels. So I really enjoyed it. Um, obviously, you know, you do get to the end. There's some drama towards the end. And again, it was, as always, it was really well paced. It was really well done. But also I love how J.D. Robb is demonstrating the growth in Eve and Rourke's relationship. Um, in this book, there was still a little bit of tension between them surrounding Eve's job and Rourke being... Um, in danger but they they're learning to compromise and that really came through in this book and although there were still some points where they they antagonized each other but also at the end of the book um there was also the demonstration of how in tune they are with each other um to the so that eve knew exactly what to do and where to be to be in the right place at the right time so again thoroughly enjoyed the writing style and I'm looking forward to continuing with the in-depth read along for the rest of this year. The second book that I finished in the month of February was the thousand page historical fiction novel and that is The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. Initially I had, when I added this to my TBR a couple of years ago, I had thought that it was fantasy um, but it's not, it's historical fiction and when um, I'd put it out that it was on my TBR, people um, did actually say to me, it's a great book, you're going to love it, really hope you enjoy it, um, it's really, really good. And uh, it was just meh for me. Um, there were parts of it that I really, really enjoyed. Basically, the basic premise is it's about um, a group of monks in Kim Kingsbridge, specifically the prior who wants to build a cathedral. And it's about the builder who also wants to uh, build a cathedral and how they come together and how the following years and the politics surrounding all of that um, affect how this cathedral happens. And I really, I really enjoyed the cathedral building part of the story, um, but there were some characters in it that really did annoy me. Um, there was there's also the backdrop to um the tussle for the throne that was actually going on in the 1100s at that time um that i think they've actually changed the name of the queen so they've used the name maud and when i've looked it up online they actually keep giving the name matilda instead but basically king henry the first 
uh, died with no named heir uh, because his two sons had actually died at sea. Um, it is actually, that is all actually fact. Um, this, di this did happen. So I think it was maybe a brother's son. Um, I can't quite remember the relation that Stephen was to King Henry I. But then his daughter Matilda, or Maud as she's called in this book, she was campaigning that actually her young son Henry should be the next king because he is the next male in direct line from King Henry. And there's the, the tussle for the throne between the two of them and also eventually when Henry comes of age, um, to, for him as well after his mother hands over to him. And I really enjoyed that part of it as well. I do really enjoy um, historical fiction, what little I've read of historical fiction that is based in fact. So I did enjoy all those parts of it. Um, what spoiled it for me was the writing. For me it wasn't paced very well, sometimes it's very slow and very plodding and then towards the end of the book it kind of speeded up and you'd then, there were there were time lapses then and there were bigger chunks of time lapse um, than there were in the, the early parts of the book and again I, that didn't sit very well with me and I felt then that I was being rushed towards an ending and and I, I was getting a little bit bored, to be perfectly honest with you. There were long stretches of narrative that were descriptive, which in some cases were really great when they were talking about the cathedral and how it was going to get built. And then there were parts of it where it was just, get on with it. I don't really need to read this. Um, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head. But yes, I did. I did struggle with it. There's also one character in there, and I should say, um, trigger warning, if you're going to attempt this book, trigger warning for rape and multiple descriptions of rape. Um, there's one character who perpetrates a rape, and it's part of his character, and it is then talked about again and again and again and again and again. And I had enough. After the f once was enough. To be told that that is part of his personality once is enough. I didn't need it over and over and over. Um, and that actually is part of what spoiled some of the story for me because every time this character came on the page, I knew he had it in for two of the main characters, Aliena and Jack. But that was enough. I didn't need to. I, di I didn't need for him to see every woman who looked like Aliena um, to for him to want to sleep with them and to the, for the him to them have to force them to do that. Um, I didn't need it every time. Um, and and he was a little bit whiny and a little bit I mean, very immature um, and he just made me angry and I just wanted to throw the book every time he came on the page. Um, the part of the book that I did love is the two characters, Aliena and Jack, who actually have a love story throughout this. And it takes quite a few years for them to get to where they should be. Um, and it's part of the story that I felt was done actually really quite well. You got to see them growing and um, learning to love each other. Obviously, Aliena, um, she isn't quite aware that she's falling in love with Jack. Um, so you get to see her come to this realisation and the journey they go on literally uh, to find each other. and. I really enjoyed that part of it and I would read that part over and over again. That's probably the romance reader in me really um, rather than the historical fiction reader but for me that actually gave me the impetus to keep reading and to not put this book down when really I clearly wasn't enjoying it. So I'm sorry to all those who said you know you I hope you really enjoy it but it just wasn't for me and it was a middle of the road book and I'm probably not going to attempt to read any more Ken Follett ever. So the third book that I finished in the month was the Just One More Page book club pick and that book is Dragonfly by Leila Meacham and I was a bit apprehensive going into this because I picked this up after I'd finished reading it or overlapped a little bit with um, the Ken Follett book but I actually was then really really surprised. This book is about five young American men and women who are recruited into the American spy services at the time of the Second World War and in 1942 they are dropped into Paris to act as spies. You know going in that there is some peril for them um, and at some point they are going to be captured uh, but what you don't know is how that happens or why it happens. 
you also um, don't know who gives them away. Uh, one of their number, sadly, is also killed, which you know about. And because of something that's found out at the beginning of this book, you know that actually not everything is as it seems with that capture and killing. The whole book is then the lead up. It's their time in Paris and uh, the people they meet and the potential for them to be given away and how they could be caught until towards the very end um, they do get caught and what happens to them after that. I actually really, really enjoyed it. I got to about chapter 70 and after that I just couldn't put the book down. Um, I had to keep reading and in fact I read the last 30 chapters or so in one evening because I just had to keep reading. I had to know what happened to these five. I had to know. Um, also, you don't know which one of them is supposedly killed um, at the beginning of the book. You just know that one of them is and you have to try and work that out as well um so I was really compelled to keep reading and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it um to the point that when I got to the end of it I actually shared a few tears um and it's not often that books of this kind actually do that for me um I do cry at books I cry quite easily um so it's not really a surprise to me but it, it this book surprised me by making me cry because I really by the end of it I really hadn't expected that reaction from me um, so if you like historical fiction, um, especially if there is fact, because obviously there is the backdrop of the Second World War and the Nazi occupation of France and also some other goings on um, surrounding the, the war that are based all in fact. Um, so I do recommend it. Um, it is one that you need to give your time to. I Initially, I was struggling because... You've got the five names of the five young men and women. You've then got the five aliases that they go, are going to live by while they're in Paris. And then you have their five code names um, that they're using as part of being the American operatives. And it did get a bit confusing about who was who at times. And you have to pay attention for that reason. So you do have to give this book your time and attention. But I do highly recommend it and I would suggest everyone have a go at reading this one. The final book that I finished in the month of February is The Girl on the Midway Stage by Deanna Cameron. And I was actually really glad to pick this one up in the end that I'd left it to last because although it was the third of the three historical fiction novels, it's a historical fiction romance novel. Um, and that made it a lot lighter in tone and... Um, content than the Ken Follett and the Leila Meacham book so I was actually quite glad to pick it up and um, that being said I was a little burnt out on historical fiction so it took me a couple of days to get going on it which isn't normally um, me when it comes to romance I usually get through romance really really quickly uh, but this is about a young woman, who, Dora, who has recently married and moved to Chicago with her ambitious husband who is trying to get a promotion within the bank where he works. And she has been tasked with um, overseeing a group of Egyptian dancers at the Chicago World's Fair, which happened um, in the late 1800s and again is a factual thing that happened. Um, although I haven't really researched much about it, I just know that it is something that actually happened. And as part of this, uh, Dora discovers more about herself as a person, um, as a woman, as a lover. And it's about how she finds freedom um, and the freedom to feel and be herself. Um, but yes, uh, it is about a young woman really coming of age. Um, and define the constraints of the society that she is then living in. Um, and I really enjoyed it. It was quite light and fluffy towards the end. I liked how um, it had a happy ending, but it didn't have the happy ending that you go into it expecting to have. So for that, I, I really enjoyed it because that makes a change. Um, normally you go into this and you know who the main couple are and you know that they're going to end up together and you know they're going to be happy. But in this, it was more the focus on Dora being happy rather than the man she believes she's in love with. 
Um, if you want something light and fluffy, like the historical backdrop, like a bit of romance, then I would recommend this. Um, I kind of toyed with the idea of going on to more books, but I don't really want to buy more books at this point in the month. Um, it's very late in the month. It's actually the 27th when I'm filming this. I'm not really in the mood to start anything else. So for the next couple of days, I'm probably just going to listen to a bit of my audio book um, for a couple of days just to keep up the momentum of reading every day, which I have been managing so far since the 1st of January. And I'm probably not going to finish anything else, which is why I'm filming it already. So those are my reads for the month of February. Um, what did you manage to get through in February? Did you have a good month? Did you have a hard month? Um, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to chat to you all down there. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give me a like. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel so you can uh, be notified when I put more videos up. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.